What does Jesus mean by I never knew you? In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus delivers a powerful message that resonates through the ages, particularly in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, where he declares, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. These words, spoken by the Son of God himself, carry profound significance for all who seek to understand their relationship with him. The concept of being known by Jesus goes beyond mere recognition. It speaks to a deep, intimate relationship that he desires to have with each of us. This relationship is not based on outward acts or religious performance, but on a genuine heart connection. I am the Good Shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. John chapter 10, verse 14. This verse illustrates the intimate relationship between Jesus and his followers. Just as a shepherd knows his sheep, Jesus knows his followers intimately, and they in turn know him. It's crucial to understand the situation in which Jesus spoke these words. In the preceding verses, Jesus warns about false prophets who come in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. He emphasizes the importance of recognizing false teachings in fruitless lives, stating that, by their fruits ye shall know them, Matthew chapter 7, verse 20. It is striking because it implies a lack of relationship between Jesus and those to whom he is speaking. In the biblical context, knowing someone goes beyond merely knowledge, it signifies a deep intimate relationship. In John chapter 10, verse 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and am known of mine. This verse illustrates the reciprocal nature of knowing and being known by Jesus. The ones to whom Jesus is referring in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, are likely individuals who claim to be followers of Christ, but did not truly know him or live according to his teachings. They may have been involved in religious activities and even performed miracles in his name, but their hearts were far from him. Jesus describes them as, ye that work iniquity, indicating that their actions were not aligned with God's will. This statement warns all who profess faith in Christ it emphasizes the importance of a genuine, transformative relationship with Jesus, characterized by obedience to His commands and a fruitful life. The message of Matthew chapter 7, verse 23 is a call to self-examination and genuine faith. It reminds us that outward displays of religiosity are not enough to secure our place in the kingdom of God. We must strive to know Jesus intimately, obey His commands, and bear fruit that reflects His character. Understanding this is of paramount importance for believers. It serves as an urgent call to examine the authenticity of your faith. This understanding is crucial for several reasons. Jesus' words are a stark reminder that being a Christian is not merely about outward appearances. It is about an intimate relationship with Him. In John chapter 15, verse 5, Jesus says, I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him. The same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. This verse emphasizes the vital connection believers must have with Christ to bear fruit in their lives. Secondly, understanding this statement helps believers discern true from false teachings. In Matthew chapter 24, verse 24, Jesus warns, For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Believers who understand the significance of this statement will be equipped to recognize false teachings and avoid being led astray. Moreover, the statement highlights the importance of obedience in the Christian life. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 3-4, through 4, it is written, And hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. True knowledge of Christ is demonstrated through obedience to His commands. Believers who understand this will strive to live lives that are pleasing to God. In James chapter 1, verse 22, it is written, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Believers are called to be active participants in their faith, not passive spectators. Understanding this statement motivates believers to live in a way that honors God in all areas of their lives. Furthermore, the statement serves as a reminder of the need for humility in the Christian walk. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, it is written, 
let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Understanding the phrase, I never knew you, as spoken by Jesus in Matthew chapter 7, verse 23, is essential for every believer. It reveals profound truths about the nature of our relationship with Him and the expectations He has for His followers. The phrase, I never knew you, also implies a sense of rejection. Despite their outward displays of religious fervor, Jesus denies knowing them, indicating that they will not enter the kingdom of heaven. This serves as a sobering reminder that outward religiosity is not enough. True discipleship requires a genuine, intimate relationship with Christ. Understanding the statement should lead us to examine our own hearts and lives. Do we truly know Jesus in a deep, personal way? Or are we merely going through the motions of religion? Are we obeying His commands and living in a way that honors Him? Exploring the concept of knowing in the Bible reveals a rich tapestry of meanings that deepen our understanding of our relationship with God. It signifies a deep, intimate, and personal relationship. In the Old Testament, knowing is often used to describe the relationship between God and His people. In Jeremiah 31, verse 34, the prophet writes, And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. This verse speaks of a profound intimacy between God and His people, where they will all know Him personally and intimately. In the New Testament, knowing is closely tied to salvation and eternal life. In John chapter 17, verse 3, Jesus defines eternal life as knowing God and Himself, saying, And this is life eternal, that they might know Thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom Thou hast sent. This verse highlights the centrality of knowing God in Jesus in the life of a believer. Furthermore, knowing in the Bible often involves obedience and intimacy. In 1 John chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, it is written, And hereby we do know that we know Him, if we keep His commandments. He that saith, I know Him, and keepeth not His commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in Him. This passage emphasizes the true knowledge of God, which is demonstrated through obedience to His commands and a life that reflects His character. Understanding how God knows us is a profound and comforting aspect of our relationship with Him. In the Bible, God's knowledge of us is not merely superficial. It is deep, intimate, and personal. God knows us through our relationship with His Son, Jesus Christ. In John chapter 10, verse 14, Jesus says, I am the Good Shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. This verse illustrates the reciprocal nature of knowing and being known by Jesus. As we come to know Jesus and follow Him, we are also known by Him in a deep and personal way. God's knowledge of us is not passive or distant. It is active and intimate. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 1, God says, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. This verse demonstrates God's personal ownership and care for His people, knowing each one by name and claiming them as His own. Jesus makes this during the Sermon on the Mount. In this sermon, Jesus addresses the crowds gathered around Him, teaching them about the principles of God's kingdom and how to live as His followers. Throughout His ministry, Jesus emphasized the importance of true discipleship and warned against the dangers of false religiosity. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 through 23, Jesus says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you, Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. False prophets and workers of lawlessness. The dangers of false prophets and workers of lawlessness is crucial for every believer. As Jesus himself warned about them in his teachings, in Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 23, Jesus cautions his followers to beware of false prophets who come disguised as sheep but are inwardly ravenous wolves. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3, 
The Apostle Peter also warns about false prophets and teachers who will secretly introduce destructive heresies, denying the Lord who bought them. He describes them as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 12, highlighting the danger they pose to the spiritual well-being of believers. As believers, we are called to test the spirits to see whether they are from God, as stated in 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. We are to discern truth from falsehood by comparing teachings with the Word of God and looking for the fruit of the Spirit in the lives of those who claim to be His followers. Identifying False Prophets Identifying false prophets is a critical skill for every believer. As Jesus and the apostles warned about their presence and influence in the world, false prophets can deceive people with their teachings and lead them away from the truth of God's Word. However, the Bible provides us with guidance on how to recognize false prophets and avoid being misled by them. The Foundation of Obedience The foundation of obedience lies in our relationship with God and our understanding of His character. As believers, we are called to obey God's commands out of love and reverence for Him. The Bible provides us with numerous examples and teachings on the importance of obedience and its significance in our walk with God. One of the key verses that highlights the foundation of obedience is found in John chapter 14, verse 15, where Jesus says, If ye love me, keep my commandments. This verse underscores the connection between love for Jesus and obedience to his commands. Our obedience to God is an expression of our love and devotion to him. In Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 13, Moses tells the Israelites, And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. This verse emphasizes the importance of loving God and serving him wholeheartedly, which are foundational aspects of obedience. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 3, the apostle John writes, For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. This verse highlights the connection between love for God and keeping His commandments. Obedience is not meant to be a burden, but a natural outflow of our love for God. Furthermore, Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, we are encouraged to trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean not on our own understanding, but to acknowledge Him in all our ways, and He will direct our paths. This verse emphasizes the importance of trusting God and obeying His commands knowing that He will guide and direct us. Importance of building our lives on the rock, Jesus. Building our lives on the rock, which is Jesus Christ, is of utmost importance for every believer. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27, Jesus tells a parable about two builders, one who builds his house on the rock and another who builds his house on the sand. When the storms come, the house built on the rock stands firm while the house built on the sand is swept away. This parable illustrates the importance of building our lives on the solid foundation of Jesus Christ. Jesus himself is referred to as the chief cornerstone in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20, emphasizing his central role in the foundation of our faith. Building our lives on Jesus means having a deep personal relationship with him, trusting in his teachings, and following his example in all aspects of life. One of the key aspects of building our lives on Jesus is having faith in Him. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it is said that without faith, it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists, and He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Faith in Jesus is not just about believing in His existence, but also about trusting in His promises and living according to His teachings. Building our lives on Jesus also means surrendering our will to His. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus says, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. This verse highlights the importance of self-denial and obedience to Jesus' commands as essential aspects of building our lives on Him. The role of obedience in our relationship with God. Obedience plays a crucial role in our relationship with God as it demonstrates our love for Him and our commitment to His will. Throughout the Bible, 
God calls his people to obedience, promising blessings for those who obey and warning of consequences for those who disobey. One of the key verses that highlights the role of obedience in our relationship with God is found in John chapter 14, verse 15, where Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commandments. This verse emphasizes the connection between love for Jesus and obedience to his commands. Obedience is not just about following rules, but about expressing our love and devotion to God. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses one through two, God promises blessings for obedience saying, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. This passage highlights the rewards of obedience and the favor that comes from aligning our lives with God's will. Conversely, disobedience carries consequences. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15, God warns, however, if you do not obey the Lord your God and do not carefully follow all his commands and decrees I am giving you today, all these curses will come on you and overtake you. This verse underscores the importance of obedience and the dangers of straying from God's commands. In 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, Samuel tells King Saul, does the Lord delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as much as in obeying the Lord? To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. This verse highlights the importance of obedience over religious rituals or outward displays of devotion. God values a heart that is obedient and surrendered to his will. In the New Testament, Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, verse 16, don't you know that when you offer yourselves to someone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one you obey, whether you are slaves to sin, which leads to death, or to obedience, which leads to righteousness. This verse emphasizes the contrast between obedience to sin, which leads to death, and obedience to God, which leads to righteousness and life. The Fruit of True Discipleship the fruit of true discipleship is evident in the lives of those who follow Jesus wholeheartedly. It is characterized by a transformation of the heart and a lifestyle that reflects the teachings and example of Jesus. The Bible provides us with clear guidance on the fruit of true discipleship and what it looks like in practice. One of the key passages that highlights the fruit of true discipleship is found in Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 through 23, where Paul writes, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. This passage describes the characteristics that should be evident in the life of a true disciple of Jesus, which are produced by the Holy Spirit working in and through them. In John chapter 15, verse eight, Jesus says, "'This is to my Father's glory, "'that you bear much fruit, "'showing yourselves to be my disciples. Here, Jesus emphasizes the importance of bearing fruit as evidence of true discipleship. This fruit of a disciple's life is not only for their own benefit, but also brings glory to God. Another aspect of the fruit of true discipleship is obedience to God's commands. In John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Obedience is a natural outgrowth of love for Jesus and is a defining characteristic of true discipleship. Additionally, true discipleship is marked by a commitment to follow Jesus' example of love and service. In John chapter 13, verses 34 through 35, Jesus commands his disciples saying, a new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Love is a central aspect of true discipleship and is demonstrated through selfless acts of service and compassion towards the others. In Matthew chapter seven, verse 20, Jesus says, thus by their fruit, you will recognize them. This verse highlights the importance of examining the fruit of a person's life to discern whether they are truly following Jesus. True discipleship is not just about outward actions, but about a transformed heart that is evident in the way a person lives and interacts with others. Characteristics of true discipleship. True discipleship is characterized by a deep, personal relationship with Jesus Christ. 
marked by a commitment to follow Him wholeheartedly. The Bible provides us with clear guidance on the characteristics of true discipleship and what it means to be a disciple of Jesus. Surrender. True discipleship begins with surrendering our will to God's will. In Luke chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus says, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. This verse emphasizes the importance of self-denial and a willingness to follow Jesus, even when it requires sacrifice. Love. Love is a central characteristic of true discipleship. In John chapter 13, verse 35, Jesus says, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. True disciples are known by their love for God and for others, which is demonstrated through their actions and attitudes. Obedience. Obedience to God's commands is another key characteristic of true discipleship. In John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commandments. True disciples seek to obey God's word and live according to his will, knowing that obedience is an expression of their love for him. Fruitfulness. True disciples bear fruit in their lives, which is evidence of their relationship with Jesus. In John chapter 15, verse 8, Jesus says, This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control is evident in the lives of true disciples. Perseverance. True disciples persevere in their faith, even in the face of trials and challenges. In Luke chapter 9, verse 62, Jesus says, No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. True disciples are committed to following Jesus for the long haul, remaining steadfast in their faith. Teachability. True disciples are teachable, always seeking to learn and grow in their understanding of God's word. In Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20, Jesus commands his disciples to go and make disciples, teaching them to obey everything he has commanded. True disciples are not only learners, but also teachers, sharing the truth of the gospel with others. How to cultivate these fruits in our lives. Cultivating the fruits of the Spirit in our lives is essential for every believer who desires to grow in their relationship with God and become more like Christ. While these fruits are produced by the Holy Spirit, there are steps we can take to cultivate them in our lives. Here are some key principles, along with relevant Bible quotes, to help us cultivate these fruits. Prayer. Prayer is essential for cultivating the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. We can ask God to help us grow in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7, Paul encourages us, saying, Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Fellowship with other believers. Fellowship with other believers is important for cultivating the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25, the writer encourages us, saying, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. Serving others. Serving others is a practical way to cultivate the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 13, Paul writes, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Serving others helps us grow in love, kindness, and gentleness. Surrender to the Holy Spirit. Cultivating the fruits of the Spirit in our lives requires surrendering to the work of the Holy Spirit. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, Paul writes, So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. As we yield to the Holy Spirit and allow Him to work in us, we will produce the fruits of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control in our lives. Knowing God Intimately Knowing God intimately is a deep and personal relationship that goes beyond mere knowledge about Him. 
It is about experiencing His presence, understanding His character, and walking in close fellowship with Him. The Bible provides us with insights into how we can know God intimately and develop a deeper relationship with Him. In Jeremiah chapter 9, verses 23 through 24, the Lord says, Let not the wise boast of their wisdom, or the strong boast of their strength, or the rich boast of their riches. But let the one who boasts boast about this, that they have the understanding to know me, that I am the Lord, who exercises kindness, justice, and righteousness on earth. For in these I delight. One way to know God intimately is through prayer. Through prayer, we can communicate with God, share our hearts with Him, and experience His peace. Another way to know God intimately is through His Word. In Psalm 119, verse 105, the psalmist writes, Your Word is a lamp for my feet, a light on my path. The Bible reveals God's character, His promises, and His will for our lives. By studying and meditating on His Word, we can gain a deeper understanding of what God is and His plan for us. Furthermore, knowing God intimately involves obedience to His commands. In John chapter 14, verse 15, Jesus says, If you love me, keep my commands. Obedience is an expression of our love for God and a key aspect of our relationship with Him. As we obey His commands, we align our lives with His will and experience His blessings. Examples of Individuals Who Knew God Intimately Throughout the Bible, we find examples of individuals who knew God intimately and had a close relationship with Him. These individuals serve as examples for us today, showing us what it means to walk closely with God and experience His presence in our lives. Here are a few examples along with relevant Bible quotes. Abraham. Abraham is often referred to as a friend of God because of his close relationship with Him. In James chapter 2, verse 23, it says, And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called God's friend. Abraham's willingness to trust God and follow his leading, even when it was difficult, is a testament to his intimate knowledge of God. Moses. Moses is another example of someone who knew God intimately. In Exodus chapter 33, verse 11, it says, The Lord would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Moses' encounters with God on Mount Sinai and his role as a mediator between God and the Israelites demonstrate his deep relationship with God. David. King David is known for his Psalms, many of which express his intimate relationship with God. In Psalm 63, verse 1, David writes, You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. David's heartfelt expressions of devotion and dependence on God reveal his intimate knowledge of him. Paul. The Apostle Paul also knew God intimately, having encountered him on the road to Damascus. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 8, Paul writes, What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. Paul's willingness to sacrifice everything for the sake of knowing Christ demonstrates his deep love and commitment to God. How to Deepen Our Relationship with God Deepening our relationship with God is a lifelong journey that requires intentional effort and a desire to know Him more intimately. It involves cultivating a deeper understanding of His character, spending time in His presence, and aligning our lives with His will. The Bible provides us with guidance on how we can deepen our relationship with God. Study of God's Word The Bible is God's revealed Word, and studying it is essential for deepening our relationship with Him. In 2 Timothy 3, verses 16-17, through Paul writes, All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good battle. By studying God's Word, we can gain a deeper understanding of His character, His will for our lives, and His promise to us. In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25, the writer encourages us to consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds, 
not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. By sharing our faith journey with others, we can receive support, encouragement, and accountability in our walk with God. Surrender to God's will. Surrendering to God's will is essential for deepening our relationship with Him. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2, Paul writes, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Surrendering to God's will involves aligning our desires and actions with His, and trusting Him to guide us in all things. The Danger of Religious Hypocrisy The danger of religious hypocrisy is a sobering reality that Jesus addressed during His earthly ministry. Hypocrisy occurs when there is a stark contrast between one's outward religious appearance and their inward motivations and actions. Throughout the Bible, we see warnings against hypocrisy and its detrimental effects on individuals and communities. In Matthew 23, Jesus delivers a scathing rebuke to the religious leaders of his time, condemning their hypocrisy and false piety. He says in verses 27 through 28, Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones, and of all uncleanness. Even so ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within ye are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Here Jesus exposes the danger of religious hypocrisy, likening it to whitewashed tombs that appear clean on the outside, but are full of decay within. The Apostle Paul also warns against hypocrisy in his letter to the Romans. In Romans chapter 12, verse 9, he writes, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Paul emphasizes the importance of genuine love and sincerity in our relationships with others, urging believers to reject hypocrisy and embrace goodness. Furthermore, in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, Paul writes, Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. This verse serves as a sobering reminder that God sees beyond outward appearances and judges the heart. Those who engage in religious hypocrisy will ultimately face the consequences of their actions. In James chapter 1, verse 22, the brother of Jesus exhorts believers, saying, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. James emphasizes the importance of living out our faith authentically, rather than merely putting on a show of religious devotion. Hypocrisy deceives not only others, but also ourselves, leading us away from true faith and obedience to God. Jesus' Warnings About Hypocrisy Jesus was deeply concerned about hypocrisy, particularly among the religious leaders of his time. He often warned against the dangers of outward religious observance without genuine inner transformation. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 6, Jesus speaks about giving to the needy, praying, and fasting, emphasizing the importance of doing these things in secret without socking attention or praise from others. In Matthew chapter 23, Jesus delivers a powerful condemnation of the scribes and Pharisees, calling them hypocrites multiple times criticizes their outward display of piety while neglecting justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Jesus warns them that their hypocrisy will result in judgment and calls them to repentance. In Luke chapter 12, verses 1 through 3, Jesus warns his disciples to be aware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. He cautions them against adopting the hypocritical attitudes and behaviors of the religious leaders, urging them instead to live with sincerity and authenticity. Jesus' teachings on hypocrisy emphasize the importance of genuine faith and obedience to God's commands. He calls us to examine our hearts and motives, ensuring that our actions are motivated by love for God and others, rather than a desire for praise or recognition. How to guard against hypocrisy in our lives. 
Guarding against hypocrisy in our lives requires intentional effort and a sincere desire to live authentically before God and others. The Bible provides us with guidance on how we can avoid falling into the trap of hypocrisy. Examine your heart. Regularly examine your motives and intentions. In Psalm 139, verses 23 through 24, David prays, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Ask God to reveal any areas of hypocrisy in your life and seek His forgiveness and guidance. Cultivate humility. Pride is often at the root of hypocrisy. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4, David writes, Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of the others. Cultivate a humble attitude, recognizing your own weaknesses and relying on God's strength. Live transparently. Be open and honest about your struggles and failures. In James chapter 5, verse 16, James encourages believers to confess your faults one to another and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. By living transparently, you can guard against the temptation to pretend to be something you are not. Focus on God's approval. Seek to please God above seeking the approval of others. Galatians chapter 1, verse 10, Paul writes, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. Keep your focus on living a life that is pleasing to God, rather than trying to impress others. Pray for God's help. Ask God to help you live with integrity and authenticity. In Psalm 19, verse 14, David prays, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Rely on God's strength and guidance to help you guard against hypocrisy in your life. Assurance of Salvation Assurance of salvation is a topic of great importance for believers as it provides confidence and peace in our relationship with God. While assurance of salvation is ultimately rooted in the promises of God's Word, it is also deeply personal experience that can vary from person to person. The Bible offers several assurances of salvation for those who have put their trust in Jesus Christ. Belief in Jesus In John chapter 3, verse 16, Jesus declares, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. This verse emphasizes the central role of belief in Jesus as the foundation of salvation. Those who place their faith in him can have assurance of eternal life. Eternal security. The Bible teaches that salvation is not based on our own efforts or merits, but on the finished work of Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 8, verses 38 through 9, Paul writes, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This assurance of eternal salvation and security is grounded in the unchanging love and faithfulness of God. Sealed by the Holy Spirit, upon believing in Jesus, Believers are sealed with the Holy Spirit as a guarantee of their inheritance. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 13 through 14 states, And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of His glory. This seal of the Holy Spirit serves as a tangible assurance of our salvation and future inheritance in Christ. Transformed Life Salvation results in a transformed life, characterized by love for God and obedience to His commands. In 1 John chapter 5, verse 13, John writes, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. The Evidence of a Transformed Life 
marked by a growing relationship with God and a desire to follow Him, provides assurance of salvation. While doubts and uncertainties may arise at times, believers can find assurance of salvation by holding firmly to the promises of God's Word and relying on the work of Jesus Christ on their behalf. As Romans chapter 10, verse 9 assures us, If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Can we have assurance of salvation? The question of whether we can have assurance of salvation is one that has been pondered by believers throughout history. It is a topic of great significance as it touches upon the foundational truths of our faith and our relationship with God. The Bible provides us with clear guidance on this matter, offering reassurance and hope to those who seek to know their standing before God. One of the key passages that addresses the assurance of salvation is found in 1 John 5, verse 13. The Apostle John writes, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that you have eternal life. This verse emphasizes the certainty and confidence that believers can have in their salvation. Through faith in Jesus Christ, we can know with assurance that we have eternal life. Furthermore, Jesus himself provides assurance of salvation to those who believe in him. In John chapter 10, verses 27 through 28, Jesus says, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. How to live with the assurance of being known by Jesus. Living with the assurance of being known by Jesus is a profound reality that can profoundly impact every aspect of our lives. It brings a sense of security, purpose, and belonging that transcends our circumstances and challenges. The Bible offers us insights into how we can live with this assurance. Firstly, cultivate a deep relationship with Jesus through prayer. Secondly, immerse yourself in God's Word and allow it to shape your thoughts and actions. Thirdly, rely on the Holy Spirit to guide and empower you in your walk with Jesus. Lastly, Cultivate a community of fellow believers who can encourage and support you in your journey with Jesus. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather here today, we come before you with open hearts and minds, seeking your divine guidance and wisdom and understanding your sacred scriptures. We acknowledge that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, and we humbly ask for your assistance in deciphering its teachings. Lord, Grant us the patience and humility to approach your word with reverence and awe, recognizing its significance in shaping our lives and understanding of the world around us. Help us to set aside our preconceptions and biases so that we may receive your truth with open hearts. We pray for clarity of mind and spirit as we delve into the depths of your scriptures. Grant us the wisdom to discern the deeper meaning hidden within the words on the page. Help us to seek beyond the surface level and uncover the profound messages of love, grace, and redemption that you have placed within your word for us to discover. Father, we acknowledge that understanding your scriptures is not merely an intellectual exercise, but a spiritual journey. We ask for the guidance of your Holy Spirit to lead us into all truth and to illuminate the words of scripture with divine insight and understanding. Give us the strength and perseverance to study your word diligently, knowing that true understanding comes through continued prayer, reflection, and study. Help us to approach your scriptures with a sense of reverence and awe, recognizing that they are a precious gift from you to guide us in our walk with you. We pray for unity among your people as we seek to understand your scriptures together. Help us to engage in meaningful dialogue and discussion, always with love and respect for one another recognizing that we are all on this journey of faith together. Lord, we lift up those who may be struggling to understand your scriptures, whether they are new to the faith or have been studying your word for years. We ask that you would grant them clarity and insight. Help them to find encouragement and support within the community of believers as they seek to grow in their understanding of your word. Finally, we pray that as we gain a deeper understanding of your scriptures, We would be transformed by the renewing of our minds. May your word take root in our hearts and bear fruit in our lives, leading us to walk in obedience to your will and to shine your light in a dark and broken world. In Jesus' name we pray.